first of all, I'd like to begin by uh, recognizing uh, a few people here. Uh, up on the high table, Larry Arthur, um, who's right here on my, uh, who's closest to me. He is the acting chief technical officer, CTO of TIGO. And he will be doing a presentation on behalf of the industry. Um, and then next to him is Mr. Joseph A. Walker. He is the national uh, chairman of the Association of Road Contractors. Um, and then right there, the very uh, tall one is about eight feet. Um, is that, is that, uh, um, he is a director uh, at the Ministry of Communications. Uh, you know, he should have been in basketball, he have been a lot of He have retired by, by now and uh, <coughs> sipping uh, uh, you know, a lot of a tall drink in the Caribbean, but he chose to do telecoms. So you are welcome to him. And then uh, the last but not the least we have Mr. Kofi Acha uh, who is with the Ghana Authority and he will be doing a presentation as well. So first of all, I want to tell you very briefly about the Chamber of Telecommunications. It was inaugurated in November 2011 um, by the then Vice President, now President uh, John Mahab. The Chamber comprises all the telecom uh, network operators. And the reason why they, uh, they found the need to establish a chamber, which is parallel to what we're familiar with, the Chamber of Minds, for example, was that there was a recognition that there are certain issues that individual network operators could not, of themselves, by themselves, resolve. Primarily, this would be regulatory, legislative um, uh, 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 issues, and, uh, and therefore they needed an institution that they, they, they would initiate to lead advocacy in those areas. That these are issues that are cross-cutting, that are of common interest, that affect network operators equally, that if they were not resolved, it would hurt the industry as a whole. And therefore, they found the need to set up uh, the chamber. It does not compromise competition. However, uh, there's cooperation, but there's still competition. In other words, there's co-competition. That's what the chamber uh, is about. So we began uh, in the last quarter, in the monitors are quarterly, so we had one uh, in the last quarter on uh, sandboxing, uh, the phenomenon of sandboxing. And this time we're talking about uh, fiber cuts or cable cuts, which is one of the challenges <coughs> excuse me, that the telecoms industry
in the, the wall coming in the background uh, to tell you about the importance of telecommunications to all of us. It's not abstract, it's real, it's in our hands, everybody's hands, from the president to the to the gentleman that, that cut the cable, to the to the one that laid the cable, to the encroachers. To the market, women selling on the pavement at Mala, where operators are trying desperately to lay their cables without success because of trespasses. It all affects us. So we've got to consider in all that we do, Mr. Marty, uh, uh, Larry, all of us together, neighbors, that this is about uh, the economic and social development of our country. That's what telecom is about. It's not for MTN, it's not for Vodafone, it's not for Tigo or Expresso or Airtel. It's for us. We use it. It works for us when it's working and when it doesn't work, it hurts us as individuals. But in the process, it hurts the industry as well. And this is the industry that has spent five billion and wants to need to spend even more so that our educational institutions, our young people uh, can have access like others do elsewhere in the world to telecoms infrastructure so they can so they can get educated much more cheaply so that we can have access to health and information uh, to telemedicine. So that our mothers couldn't die needlessly because they're trying to travel on a, a, a 50 kilometer road uh, with potholes like Owari. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, this is it's about our lives, our social development, our economic growth is all underpinned by telecommunications. So, that's why I want you here. That's why. I believe that's why you are accepted to come because you recognize the importance of this industry and the role that you have played and can continue to play. <clears throat> but this cannot be the end of this conversation. We will together create an opportunity in the coming weeks, dates, and, and venues to be announced where we'll have a more, uh, much more focused, uh, perhaps without cameras so we can um, determine and develop some concrete actions and some outcomes and hopefully long-term impact as a result of the uh, discussions and the discourse that we'll have in our next uh, opportunity definitely before long before elections um, even not in September in October, uh, GUR and through the National Engineering Coordinating Team, we've talked about this, uh, but it's been difficult to fix a date and get on with it. And I think that uh, from here, we can all agree that this is something that is necessary and that we must do, all of us together. Thank you very much for coming.